Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Pocket Racers. Hopefully, you guys all got an email, um, which is why you're here, I suppose. Um, but uh, yeah, this is one of IEEE's year-long projects. It's the new one, newest one. And uh, we will be building, essentially, a self-driving car with like two, two kinds of algorithms. One of them will be machine learning based, and the other one will be like uh, image processing and sort of logic heuristic based algorithms and stuff like that. Um, this project is sort of composed of these like two halves and then like over the course of the year you'll get the chance to like work with them and then sort of like compare and contrast and see like you know what are the advantages of some of these and what are the advantages of um, or what are some of the disadvantages of it. Um, our first lecture is going to be about your uh, microprocessor Raspberry Pis. Um, it's going to be a pretty short lecture roughly around 30 minutes. Um, we have a social that's going to be coming after. Um, there will be pizza, hopefully. Uh, it'll come sometime around 7, so we encourage you guys to stay for that. Um, yeah. So, oh, I guess I should have put that there. Uh, our, like, mascot is pretty much, like, cars, 2006, Lightning Queen, you know? It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I think you guys have gotten, gotten that memo already. <laughs> um, so, so something before we get started is some logistics. You guys should have pretty much seen all of this um, in the email. Well, not this part. Uh, this is the IEEE link tree. We'll be posting these slides after, so um, you'll definitely get the chance to see this. But um, this basically just contains all the links to like pretty much everything you'd ever need for IEEE. So there's a QR code, or later in the slides you can just click the link. Okay. Um, this is something that you guys probably saw in the email. Um, basically, uh, most important thing for you guys is probably to look over the syllabus. Um, I'm sure you guys have already, hopefully, better. Um, uh, there's a team form due tonight. Uh, basically, some of you guys applied in your applications with like a team. Uh, that's fine. Uh, basically, like tonight, uh, you'll submit like a team form, one team form per team. And then uh, you'll mark your uh, your names and then your Discord tags, tags, which will be like our primary way of communicating with you. Um, if you guys don't have a team or didn't apply with a team, that's what tonight is for. Uh, we have a social. Hopefully, you guys can meet some people, work out a team. If not, um, that's still okay. Uh, fill out the form individually. It accepts like any number of teammates. So let's say you have a group of two and you're still looking for one. Um, That'll work, just submit it like that, one per team again. Uh, and then we'll put you guys together and match you guys randomly. So it'll work out. That's due tonight, midnight. Um, yeah. Uh, three and four are sort of coupled together. Uh, IEEE safety trainings and deposits. Uh, these are sort of like a soft due date. Um, we've set them to tomorrow just to try to incentivize you guys to do them. <laughs> you, you need these um, trainings and deposit to pick up a kit. So this is required for you to like, you know, get to work as soon as possible. But um, formally, your deposit will be due November 1st by, um, by decree of our treasurer, I suppose. But uh, I strongly encourage you not to wait till then because you can't pick up your kit and you're definitely going to need to work on the project before November 1st. So please um, try to stick to these uh, deadlines. Um, if you guys have any issues meeting them, or uh, earlier we always talked about deposit reductions in your applications and stuff like that. If you feel the need to request those, um, you can come to us, I don't know, after Discord, email, anything works. So bear in mind that should you need anything, you should contact us. Okay, so this is like a rough overview of our project and what it's composed of. So we have a Raspberry Pi. Um, you guys have varying degrees of familiarity of that, but it's basically what we're going to be using to implement pretty much everything in our project this year. Um, GPIO, uh, if you know what that is, general purpose input and output, we'll talk about it more, but like we use these for motors, um, we have power delivery to the Pi, stuff like that. And Pi is powered with batteries, it's gonna be on your car, it's gonna be amazing, so yeah. Um, computer vision, uh, this is going to be done primarily through Python's package OpenCV. Uh, some of you guys might be familiar, some of you guys might not be. That's fine, we cover it pretty much from the ground up, so um, you'll learn about that third lecture this fall. Um, and then finally, machine learning. Um, we're going to cover things like regression, neural networks, convolutional neural networks. Again, from the ground up, if you have no experience, perfectly fine. Um, that's actually starting next lecture, 
and then we'll continue it in winter. It seems a little weird, but um, we have our reasons, I guess. So yeah. Yes, this is an introduction to us. Uh, we already introduced ourselves. This is me. Uh, I was in like New Tahoe, and then my friends were like, don't hit your head, because I recently got into like a skateboarding accident. And then I fell back to do a snow angel, and I hit my head. It was kind of a meme, and they still make fun of me for it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, can I get confirmation that this image goes hard? Yeah. Goes yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, this was like formerly my Discord profile picture. I'm not sure if I made the right switch. Uh, I, I kind of like this one. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, so I guess we're going to talk about like Raspberry Pi and why is it Raspberry? Or what flavor is it? Uh, we're not talking about the food. We're actually talking about the microprocessor, as Justin mentioned. So it looks like this. Um, so a Raspberry Pi is a microprocessor. And traditional computers, like I guess the ones that you're kind of used to, they have like the memory separate from the motherboard. They um, can be expanded with peripherals, and they draw more power and are bigger. But for us, we're going to be using the Raspberry Pi, which has the memory, the CPU, all on one board. And it can't be expanded directly, and it draws less power. Um, it's also smaller, which is an advantage for our car, so we can have a smaller car that drives around more easily. How many of you guys have worked with Arduino before? Yeah. <laughs> How many of you guys have worked with Raspberry Pis before? Yeah, like there's a really big difference in the numbers, right? So uh, the difference between Arduino and a Raspberry Pi is an Arduino is a microcontroller. And these are, these are good because they also have a lot of the CPU memory and et cetera on the same chip. They draw less power and are smaller. And they have no operating system. And the microprocessor of the Raspberry Pi, um, they draw more power and they're bigger. And they have a fully fledged operating system. So if people are more familiar with Arduino and they have all these um, perks like having less power and being smaller, why, why are we using Raspberry Pis? So the problem with microcontrollers is that they're often simpler in circuitry and then we need complex processors for this project because they're gonna be doing computer vision and machine learning tasks. They also have lower clock, clock speeds and we want to have like a faster, um, you want to have faster multi-core chips so that they can handle different operations as once as well. And they also use lower level of programming tool chains. And I think for our project, since it's like more beginner friendly, we want to be able to use high level languages like Python so that we can use the libraries like OpenCV and um, everything else. So that's why we're using Raspberry Pi instead of Arduino. Yeah, fortunately we're not going to ask you to implement machine learning from scratch in like C. That would probably not be great. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. So uh, this is the Pi. Um, all of you guys, well, we finally managed to standardize all of our Pis, so all of you guys will be getting Pi 4Bs with 4 gigs of RAM. I know, right? Crazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we have like several components of the Pi. Um, most important things for you guys are, OK, they're highlighted. OK, I thought I got it wrong for a second. OK, so camera input. We're going to have a camera. It's like a little module. Uh, you plug it into this ribbon. Um, your guys' first lab is going to be sort of like assembling all sorts of the stuff, so these slides will be a good reference for you. Um, yeah, there's like a ribbon that plugs into here is the camera input. Um, GPIO pins up here, if you guys have done Arduino, you know what these are. Um, uh, we will be using some like dedicated PWM pins on this Raspberry Pi. They have like hardware built into them um, to like generate better PWMs. It to be explained later. <laughs> um, uh, but yes, we'll be using those for motor control. And then this is one of your power supplies. Um, basically, we'll have two ways of powering the Pi uh, this year. One of them is with like an AC adapter. You plug into the wall. You plug into the Pi. Um, it'll power your Pi. But obviously, um, we want the car to move. And if you plug it into a wall, it's not going to be great. So the other way we do is with batteries. And then with batteries, uh, we have battery holders on the car. You put the batteries in. Um, there's a lead that comes out of it. And then you'll plug it into one of these pins, which will supply power to the car. So, yeah. The, uh, and the other ones are like not really important. <laughs> um, so this, this is the camera that I was talking about earlier. Um, it's like Raspberry Pi camera module, pretty good. Um, covers decent range of F FPS and resolutions. We can use it to take photos, but for us we'll be using video mainly because we need a live feed, so yeah. And then um, GPIO pins, this is like, 
I don't really need to explain much more. It seems everyone here has used Arduino, right? So going once, going twice, anyone want to hear more about GPIO, what they already know? <laughs> no? Good. OK. Uh, before we go on, does anyone have any questions on anything in particular? Are we going to be running inference directly on the Raspberry Pi? So it's not a big model that we're going to be running. Um, so there is like, we could binarize our model to fit it. Um, this is like a, a design decision. I'm not sure how many people are really getting what I'm saying here. But basically, um, there's like, if you implement something really complex, uh, neural networks are full of like a lot of weights and stuff like that. It turns out you can save a lot of information from those weights by just turning them into like positive numbers, negative numbers, and zeros, and it saves a lot of data. Um, it's a d design decision that's like, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So <laughs> yeah, but yes, um, it has to fit on the Pi, so it will not really be complex. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think Justin already mentioned like general purpose input output thing, so we can go through this. Uh, you can also look this up. It's like the pinout, so you can see like what all the different things are and like what's ground, what's um, what's five volts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the the link down there will help you a lot in the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we have ground. I'm sure you guys know what ground is. Uh, and then yeah, powering your powering your your components with the five volt pins as well. I mean. Um, if any of you guys need more information on GPIO, uh, be sure to let us know and we'll explain it more. But for the purposes of this project, it'll be pretty much similar to like everything you guys have done in Arduino already. And we will also have like a dedicated lecture on this stuff. It'll be short, but um, there will be the opportunity for you guys to learn more. So since this is an intro lecture, we're trying to keep it short. So. Any questions? <laughs> okay, so uh, our, our Pi is going to be rated for 5 volts, 5 amps. Uh, we won't want to exceed this. Um, so I've talked about the two different kinds of power supplies. Let's talk about how we like manage this. So again, as mentioned before, this is a USB thing. We'll be providing this to you guys. Um, and since we want to have cars that move around, um, we want batteries. Now. This looks very appetizing. You have two 2.5 volt batteries supplying 5 volts to the car. Um, uh, some of you guys have pretty good backgrounds, so can anyone tell me what the problem with an approach like this might be? Hold on. What's that? I don't know. Internal resistance in the batteries? Maybe? Yes, that, that would certainly be a problem. Uh, but there is a more pretty much like. I think you guys might know, but. Um, <laughs> is there something with the batteries themselves? Um, yeah. Like uh, how, they're, how they're wired? There's nothing wrong with the wire. Oh. What, what, what do batteries do? Like, they supply power, right? Mm -hmm. And then in comparison to like an AC input from a wall, what happens to batteries over time? Oh, they're not going to have power like the same amount of yeah. voltage. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. So as the batteries run out of charge, they're going to deplete the voltage and if we're like if we want to supply 5 volts to the pi and most importantly the pi is rated at 5 volts if we run at anything lower we might get things like solar clock speeds eventually we might not even get functionality from the pi and stuff like that so this would not be ideal um, well then if we you know supply more power it will work faster right um, this isn't great so uh, highly not recommended to do this um, which is why we have this wonderful, uh, oh yes, this is just illustrating that this would not be a good idea. Yes, if they ran out of charge to the point where they only supplied 2.5 volts, you'd be good for them, but I think your pie would be fried, so this is not a good idea. Um, fortunately, in double E, we have this invention uh, here. Uh, can anyone tell me what this missing component is that would, you know, sort of lower the voltage um, from anything greater than 5 volts to 5 volts? Like a buck converter? Yeah, exactly. Um, buck, 
is a term that we use to refer to voltage regulators. Uh, there are like two kinds, well, I guess there's three. There's probably a lot more actually, but the basic kinds are like buck, voltage regulator, which will bring it down, boost, which can bring your voltage up, and then buck and boost, which has the capability of doing both. So yeah, uh, in this case, we'll be using a buck converter, only we're only interested in bringing the power down. So um, yes, we have a voltage regulator. Here's a picture of what ours actually look like. Um, this little phrase about this potentiometer, um, I advise you guys to actually ignore this. What we're gonna do for you guys uh, when we put together your cars is we're actually gonna cut this potentiometer off because it's actually like really annoying. Uh, we, <laughs> we do just want the input to, or the output of this voltage regulator to be fixed at five volts. So your Pi will always get consistent power. Uh, earlier when I said we're just using a buck voltage regulator, it means it can only regulate down. Um, the batteries we'll be giving you, I believe they're 4.2 volts each roughly. Uh, you wouldn't ever want to let them discharge so that the sum of their voltages is less than five because then you would run into issues where your Pi is not getting enough power, so yeah. Um, so yeah, in summary, uh, we'll be focusing on uh, AC input is one of the easiest way to power your Pi, so you just plug it into the wall, it's always gonna be right. Camera, um, gonna plug it into your GPIO pins. When you use your battery, like I'm pretty sure this pin right here is five volt power supply for the five, or five volt power supply for the Pi, and then um, you'll just plug it in there. Um, your five volts from your battery, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it about the Pi. Um, this is pretty much the end of the lecture. Here's some reminders and stuff like that. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Sorry, um, I, it's kind of unrelated to the content, content of the lecture, but I was just wondering, like logistically, what what days were we looking to meet for on the project? I know lectures are like Monday nights. So, so you don't know yet? Uh, it kind of depends on your team. So once you get assigned to your team, you guys can work out like when you want to come to the lab and complete the assignments. Okay. Justin and I have lab hours, like office hours kind of, yeah. in the IEEE lab on Wednesdays. And so that's like a good time to come. It definitely, going to lab hours definitely speeds up the process. It'll take you way less time because you can ask questions and whatnot. And then also work sessions are, we'll let you know when those are, but those are usually on the weekends, which is also a good time if you're like, you want to ask some questions. We'll also be covering like a decent block of time with those work sessions like on the weekends. They're longer than say this lecture. So it's not something like you have to show up at the start of and be at the end of or something like that. Like you can pop in. Uh, same with lab hours actually. What, what we've done this year, um, because this worked pretty well last year, is we sort of have like a block, like a day. Our day this quarter <coughs> is actually Wednesday where I think from 10 to 1 and then 1 to um, 6, or sorry, from 10 to 1 and 2 to 6. Uh, will be available in the lab, um, unless otherwise specified, I guess. But uh, generally speaking, we'll be available in the lab. You can come, ask us questions, stuff like that. Um, so yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Is there anything that like? Is there anything that we're not allowed to do to the car? <laughs> so. <laughs> or is there like a list of this? Stuff? Okay. Um, we have a like battery standard operating procedure um, thing just to let you guys not fry your pie. But um, uh, in general, I don't think we would, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, unless if you went out of your way to fry your pie by um, connecting it directly to like your battery's output and stuff like that. Um, I think as long as you follow instructions and stuff like that, it'll be fine. Uh, did you mean your question in like a more free form sense? Like, yeah, like, a more, like are we allowed to add things to it to make it go faster? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you might find limitations within the way we physically constructed our car this year. Um, we, we have a car body. It operates with like a, a, a pulley. Um, the parts are 3D printed. Um, I'm not sure how you might go on to, we, okay, I will just say we encourage innovation. I, I like um, run it by us. Are you but, saying a pulley for like the drive? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, this project is in its infancy. You guys still in a lot of ways are guinea pigs. <laughs> um, should you guys have any ambitions and what you want to try and stuff like that, we'll always support them. Uh, if you come to us, um, as long as it's not something like can I borrow six pies to make a fire? Like, <laughs> I think we're gonna be okay. So, yeah. 
I, what if we don't have that though? Um, okay. I believe on the syllabus it says something along the lines of if you don't have a Venmo, you can contact our treasurer on okay, Discord. Cool. Cool. So yeah. Mark. Can you tell her cash? I don't know. That's that's a Miriam question. She told, she told me that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cash or PayPal? Yeah. Well, shouldn't it be to IEEE? Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll just know that you paid us. Yeah, so so. <laughs> money orders. Yeah, money orders. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to pay with Venmo or you don't have it, stuff like that, uh, make sure you contact our treasurer on Discord. Uh, the information is in the syllabus. So, yeah. Any other questions? Any questions? No? Okay. Let me stop the recording, actually.